Hello everyone this is part 7 of what if Naruto was trained by Anko and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like and subscribe to see more comment down below now let's To get everything out of the way, Naruto asked if he could help Haku with what she was doing. She thanked him for the help and the two began to pick herbs. While they did, Haku recognized the little destruction that was created. She looked at Naruto and wondered if this was because of him. Was all that you doing Naruto? Haku asked. Yeah, I was letting out some steam and I was working on this new jutsu. Naruto answered, wow that must have been a strong technique. Haku said, yeah, it's pretty strong. I would explain it but it would just bore you. Naruto said, probably, I wanted to be a shinobi at one time but I don't really like to kill. I'm too soft to be a shinobi. Haku said. Naruto nodded and the two fell into some light conversation. Haku realized that the boy was not just blurting things out like, she, hoped. He was definitely more skilled as Zabuza thought. After a while, they had finished picking the herbs and Haku was getting ready to leave. She was walking anyway until she stopped and faced Naruto. May I ask you a question Naruto? Haku asked. Sure. Naruto said. Do you have anyone precious close to you? Haku asked. Say what? Naruto asked. I believe that a person becomes truly strong when they have something or someone precious to protect. I think that it gives us great strength when something or someone we love very much is threatened. Do you have someone that like? Haku asked. Naruto was surprised by the question and thought hard about it. He did have people like that. He thought of Anko, Aruka, Konoamaru, the old man Hokage and Hanata. Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura weren't really in his mind yet but he would protect them as he would the others. He smiled as he faced Haku. Yeah. I do have people like that and I would protect them with my life. Naruto said. Then I believe that you will truly become strong. Haku said with a smile. She began to walk away again before stopping again. By the way, I think we need to clear things up. I'm not a girl, I'm actually a boy. With that statement, he walked away. He smirked and could only image the expression on Naruto's face. As he walked he saw one of the other genin. They passed each other without glancing at each other. He continued on his way without pause. Sasuke looked back for a second but didn't think much about it. He then found Naruto. He was confused by the stupid look on his face but annoyed that he was just standing there like an idiot. He made his way to get his moronic teammate. The week was over. Kakashi was back at full strength, thanks to the medicine that Tsunami was providing. Sakura was battle ready and could not wait to show her stuff. Sasuke was prepared at well and was excited to fight again. As for Naruto, he was still sleeping soundly. It wasn't a surprise as he was mastering that water jutsu that nearly took out the docks. Sakura looked at the snoring blonde with a sigh. I can't believe that the idiot overtrained. Still, that was a pretty wicked jutsu he learned. Sakura said, he shouldn't really be using such a jutsu. It's an A-ranked jutsu that he isn't ready for yet. Kakashi said, I don't know sensei. He looked pretty comfortable with that jutsu. He didn't even look winded after he launched it three times. Sakura commented. Sasuke just frowned at that but didn't comment about the jutsu. It did annoy him though that Naruto had such a jutsu in his arsenal. At best, he could only do C-ranked jutsu. Anyway, let's leave him to rest. I'm sure that he'll awake soon and he can watch over the tsunami and Inari. Kakashi said. The group left with Tazuna to go to the bridge. When they got there, Kakashi was suddenly on edge. There was a thin fog that did not look natural. They moved closer and saw some of Tazuna's men on the ground. Tazuna ran to one of them and asked what was wrong. He whispered, a demon, before passing out. That's when they were hit by an intense killer intent. So, you did survive. Kakashi said, that I did, I noticed that you're missing a brat. You won't be getting so far without him here, Zabuza said. So of the mist cleared and showed the team was surrounded by eight Mizu Bunshin, water clone. Your other two don't look like they have changed much. The boy is still shaking like a leaf. 
I'm shaking with excitement. Sasuke said with a grin. Sasuke, Sakura, Kakashi barked. Sasuke moved like a blur and cut down six Mizu Bunshin in an instant. Sakura launched two Shuriken with amazing speed and deadly accuracy, destroying the last two. They were nothing but puddles now. Kakashi was proud of Sasuke and a little surprised at Sakura. He would have to thank Naruto if they survived this. He turned his attention back to Zabuza who appeared with his partner. Well, well, the brat's got some teeth. It looks like that you have a rival in speed Haku. Zabuza said. That is does Zabuza-sama. Haku replied. Sasuke stepped forward and glared at the masked teen and looked ready to take him on. Sakura stuck to Tazuna and watched as her sensei and her crush prepare to fight the two Nukunan, missing Nin. Naruto awoke to the sounds of screaming. He was a little groggy but alert. He moved to the window and saw Tsunami was being held by two men dressed as thugs. He saw Inari facing him down, and then run at the two who were holding his mother. Naruto quickly moved into action. Just as the two men drew their swords, he grabbed Inari and replaced them with two logs. He then appeared next to Tsunami and put Inari down. The two swordsmen turned to face the three people. What the? I thought that those shinobi would be the bridge. The man with skull cap asked. I guess they left him behind to guard the family. The man with the eye patch and tattoo answered. Naruto glared at the two as he processed what they said. If they were here to kidnap the family, it meant that Zabuza was attacking the bridge right now. He would get to his team later as he had to deal with the problem in front of him. It doesn't matter if they left a ninja here. He's just a kid. He's probably the weakest of the group. The eye patch man said. Naruto faced him and grinned. Like a snake striking at something, Naruto threw a shuriken at him. It was lodged into his sword hand, forcing him to drop his blade. As he cried out in pain, Naruto was on him, slamming his knee into his neck. The man gasped as he dropped to his knees, grabbing the side of his neck. Waraji, his partner roared. He looked at Naruto and brought his blade across quickly. Naruto used the kawarimi, body replacement, to escape. The man growled but that soon turned into pain as he was struck by five kunai, two in the back of his knees, one in his shoulder joint, one in the elbow and the last one in his kidney. They both were on the ground, gasping and bleeding. They heard the sounds of rushing water and turned to see a torrent of water coming at them. They were both swept up by the water and sent deep within the forest. Naruto looked at the two clones that he created to watch the family. They nodded and made their way into the forest. Naruto walked up to the mother and son. He looked at Inari for a while before smiling. Well, maybe you have a pair after all, Naruto said. Naruto put on his clothes and readied himself for battle. His clones returned, letting him know that the two were nowhere to be found. Naruto really couldn't concern himself with them as his team needed him at the bridge. Besides, the guy he need in the neck and the other he launched his kunai would need immediate attention so they wouldn't be returning. He secured the house with traps before getting ready to go. He looked at the family and gave them a serious glance. He pulled out a kunai and gave it to Tsunami. I hope that you don't need to use it but it's just a precaution. I'm heading to the bridge now, Naruto said. As he turned to leave, Anari called out to him. Naruto turned and faced him. I, I'm sorry, about what I said. Anari said. Don't sweat it. I'm just glad that you realized that sometimes you got to put your life on the line if you want to survive. You've made your father proud today, Naruto said with a grin. He opened the door and took off to the bridge. He ran at top speed, hoping that everyone was okay. Things couldn't be more wrong at the moment for Team Kakashi. At first it looked like that everything was going their way. Sasuke, with his new control of Chakra, was able to match the older boy in terms of speed. Kakashi was doing his best against Zabuza and believed that he would be able to defeat him. Sakura was guarding Tazuna and was confident that she could. That's when everything changed in an instant. Zabuza thickened the mist around him and Kakashi. When this happened, Kakashi could not tell where Zabuza was coming from with his Sharingan. This is why he was stabbed in the hand by Zabuza's kunai. The man smirked as he told Kakashi that he knew the weakness of his Sharingan, thanks to his tool, Haku. 
He explained what Haku explained to him and Kakashi was worried. Sensing his worry, he told him that the brat who was fighting Haku would soon be in the same situation as he was because of Haku's ability. That ability of Haku was a Keke Genkai, which allowed the team to create ice out of thin air. Sasuke was now on the defensive as he was nearly skewered by needles of ice. What really worried the young Uchiha was that he did that with just one hand, creating one-handed seals. He then did another seal and Sasuke was suddenly concealed in a dome of mirrors made of ice. Haku called this Jutsu Makio Hyosho, demonic mirroring ice crystals. Sasuke watched as Haku merged with the mirrors and appeared all around him. That's when Sasuke was bombarded with Senbon at an incredible speed. He screamed out as he was attacked from all directions. Kakashi and Sakura were helpless as they couldn't move to help him. That's when everything got chaotic as multiple explosions rocked the bridge. The explosion dispelled some of the mist. Within the smoke, Zabuza heard the sounds of metal flying at him and blocked it with his sword. He then swung his blade and sliced the airborne Naruto in two. He continued his swing and brought it down on another Naruto who was coming at him for the smoke, splitting him in two. He let out a vicious back fist and caught another Naruto that nearly stabbed him. All three dispelled into smoke, signaling that they were clones. Haku was looking for an attacker when two kunai whizzed into the dome next to Sasuke. It exploded, consuming Sasuke and the done in a dark smoke. Haku was surprised that someone would just kill their own comrade in cold blood. When the smoke cleared, he was surprised to see that Sasuke was gone and not a trace of blood or body parts. He looked around and saw that Sasuke was fine. He was with his teammates, being looked over by the pink-haired Kunoichi. The blonde had surrounded them with clones with one of them standing in the front. When all the chaos was done, everyone was wondering what was going on. Zabuza was the first to break the silence. So the wonder brat arrives. That was pretty clever of you keeping my attention while you got your teammate. Zabuza commented. You're just as I thought you were. Sending thugs to get you a bargaining chip is pretty low. Naruto commented. What the hell are you talking about? Zabuza asked. Don't play dumb. You sent two swordsmen to capture Tazuna's daughter and son. Well, it didn't work and they are either probably dead or dying. Naruto answered. Zabuza looked concerned about what he just said. What was Gato thinking about sending thugs after the old man's family? Zabuza Sama, we should stick to the plan. I will handle the genin. Haku said. Very well, I leave them to you. Zabuza said before doing a signal seal. Everyone watched as the mist rolled in again. Haku and Naruto faced off against each other, both ready to fight. I commend you on your planning. I will take you seriously for here on end. Haku said. I'm glad to hear that because if you don't, I'm going to rip you apart. Naruto said. Two prepared to rush each other as the battle of the bridge continued. Chapter 14 Naruto and Haku stared at each other. Naruto flicked out two kunai and held them in a reverse grip. He got into a stance and prepared to charge. Sakura, I need to help the team. I'm going to need his help soon. I should be able to hold him off until then. My clones with cover you all right? Naruto said. Yeah, I get it. Kick his ass Naruto, Sakura said. That's my plan, Naruto shouted and charged at Haku. Haku slipped out some Senbon and engaged Naruto. Sakura and Sasuke couldn't really see because of the mist but they could hear the sounds of metal connecting. Within the mist, Naruto was doing his best to fight Haku. Haku had to admit that he was doing pretty well. Naruto was able to keep from getting hit with his Senbon. He didn't know how but he was able to avoid his attacks and counter with his own. Naruto patted himself on the back for the secret training he did. He trained himself to fight in the mist because it was Zabuza's main strategy. After not getting any help from Kakashi, Naruto found a fogged area and had his clones attack him from within it. He only had a week but it paid off as he was able to feel the attacks coming. He flicked the kunai and stabbed at Haku. Haku moved but the side of the kunai nicked his mask. He tried to hit him in the neck but Naruto ducked it. His leg snapped forward and caught Haku in the gut. He tried to cut him with the other kunai but Haku caught his wrist and elbowed him. 
Naruto twisted with the blow and counted with a kick. Haku blocked it but was pushed back. Back to his feet, he charged again at Haku. They were once again engaged in battle. Sasuke was growling and looking into the mist. He kept fidgeting as he wanted to get back into the fight. Sakura, hurry up, Sasuke exclaimed. I'm sorry Sasuke-kun but I don't know what will happen if I remove this Senbon quickly. It might cause some major damage. Sakura explained. I don't care, just get these damn needles out of me, Sasuke shouted. Hey, keep quiet kid. Doesn't that Jonan know how to hear us through the mist? What if he kills us if we're not silent? Tazuna whispered harshly. Sasuke glared at him but kept quiet after that. He wanted to get back into the fight and show this fake Oinin, Hunter Nin, just who the better opponent was. Kakashi and Zabuza backed away from each other. They got ready for another go when they listened to the sounds coming from the mist. Zabuza, whose eyes were closed, couldn't help but smirk at what he was hearing. Hey, hey, I thought that the Uchiha had grown but it just goes to show you that he's still a wannabe. Not that other student of yours, he might be a great ninja one day. A shame that his life will end against Haku. Zabuza said, you underestimate my little Jinan. If anything, your Haku should be worried about Naruto. He really doesn't know the meaning of the word restraint. Kakashi said, is that something that he learned for his real sensei? Zabuza said with amusement. Kakashi had a small twitch after hearing that. We'll just have to see how well he does. I know your other gene and will not have the same success. Zabuza entered the mist and vanished from view. Kakashi was confused until he realized what he was taking about. Naruto's clones were alert and sensed that someone was coming from behind them. They launched a few shuriken in that direction, alerting the others. They heard nothing but were on edge. That was a nice guess kid. Zabuza said from behind. Zabuza wiped him out with a swing of his sword. He continued his momentum and was about to bring it down on Tazuna, Sakura and Sasuke. The blade came down and was intercepted by Kakashi. The force behind the blow nearly drove him to a knee but he was able to stop the blade. Zabuza smirked and quickly pulled the blade toward him. Kakashi winced as the sharp edge cut his forearm. Naruto's remaining clones came and joined his sensei. Zabuza just laughed and melted back into the mist. Sakura was trying to get her breathing under control as that moment scared her. She turned back to Sasuke, who was also very scared. She also noticed that something was up with his eyes. They were red. One eye had one tome in it and the other had two. She was curious as to what it was. Sasuke-kun, there's something wrong with your eyes, Sakura said. Sasuke looked at her with confusion until he could see how Sakura's chakra was flowing. The only way he could see that was because he had activated his Keke Genkai, blood limit. He had finally activated the Sharingan. Smiling to himself, he ripped out the remaining needles and ran into the mist, ignoring Sakura's protest. Naruto and Haku were locked in a stalemate. His kunai were grinding against his senbon. Despite the height advantage, Naruto was holding his ground against Haku. The battle had not gone in either of their favors since beginning. Haku attempted to get Naruto back within the Dome of Mirrors but he saw right through the ploy and stuck to the outside. Haku changed tactics and entered his mirrors, attacking from within them. Naruto summoned his clones and tried to attack Haku from the outside but it proved to be worthless. That's when he began to do hand seals and used the Sutan, Daibakufu no Jutsu, water release, great waterfall technique. The Jutsu smashed one of Haku's mirrors, sending him in a whirl spin. He quickly got to the top mirror and survived. He quickly had to block Naruto attempt to kill him and now the two were locked in a battle of wills. You are definitely skilled Kanoa ninja. I was not expecting that, Haku said. If you think that was amazing, then you're going to love what I have in store for you next. Naruto said with an Anko-like grin. That's when the two suddenly had to move as a fireball landed where they were. As he was jumping away, Naruto was struck by several senbon and hit the ground with a thud. He looked up to see that Haku was back in his remaining mirrors. He rolled out of the way as several more senbon attempted to get him. As he rolled, he watched as Sasuke entered the Dome of Mirrors. Hey, I'm your opponent now, 
Sasuke exclaimed and fired a fireball at one of the remaining mirrors. It hit the mirror but it did little to break it. Haku attacked the boy but Sasuke was quicker, deflecting all of the Senbon. Haku was curious about this and launched from all areas. Sasuke was still able to keep up and deflected most of the needles. Haku was get frustrated when he noticed his eyes were similar like Kakashi. He then remembered who this boy was. Sasuke was extremely happy at having his Sharingan. With it, he could easily defeat his foe. He wouldn't have to be saved by Naruto. He stood and waiting for Haku's next attack. So you have finally awakened your eyes. I commend you for activating them. However, they will not help you. Allow me to show you. Haku said and began another barrage of Senbon. What was different about this attack was that it was coming in groups and different types of speed. Sasuke was still able to deflect and dodge but it became much harder for him. He was struck in the legs, shoulder and arm. He dropped to a knee and Haku launched another barrage. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto shouted and several clones jumped into the fray. Haku attacked them and was able to dispel several of them. Three of them surrounded Sasuke and guarded him. Naruto stood and summoned some more clones. Haku cursed as the clones attacked from within and outside. He could feel his chakra draining trying to keep this jutsu activate. His earlier fight with Naruto wasn't helping. He needed to end this now. Sasuke looked at the clones with a snarl. What do you think you're doing Dobi? Sasuke asked. What am I thinking? What the hell are you thinking team? How stupid do you have to be to run into the opponent's jutsu? You think because you have your Sharingan that you're unbeatable? Get your head out of your ass and think. We need to work together or he's going to kill us. Naruto shouted. Sasuke snarled but did not argue with him. Haku fired another set of Senbon at them and the two with the clones began to move. Sasuke kept his eyes of Haku and was able to still keep track of him and pointed it out to Naruto. Naruto would launch Shuriken and Kunai at Haku would barely dodge. Haku would counter but they were able to avoid it. He was getting very tired and he needed to at least take one of them out. He decided that it would be Sasuke. With the water that Naruto used in his jutsu gave Haku an idea. That's when he came out of the mirror doing one-handed seals. Hajutsu, Sensatsu Suisho, Secret Technique, Thousand Flying Water Needles of Death, Haku called out. The water took the form of a thousand needles. Haku directed the needles to eliminate all of Naruto's clones. Some of them hit the original Naruto and he was dropped to a knee. Haku charged at him, attempting to finish him off. While he did not like him, Sasuke did not wish death upon him. He jumped in the way of Haku's charge but that's what Haku wanted. He launched Senbon that connected all over Sasuke's body but Sasuke was still able to knock Haku away. Naruto watched in horror as Sasuke hit the ground with a thud. Sasuke, Naruto shouted and made his way over to him. He could see that Sasuke was in bad shape. You stupid moron, what were you thinking jumping in like that? I told you to think before you did anything. That's just like you Dobi. I save your life and you do nothing but bitch. Sasuke said. He coughed a little and felt himself go a little cold. Damn it, it wasn't supposed to be this way. I was supposed to kill my brother for his betrayal. I can't believe, I, died, because, my, body, betrayed, me. With those last words, Sasuke's eyes closed. Sasuke, Sasuke, Naruto shouted. He shook Sasuke's body but he did not wake up. Haku stood and looked at the two. Is this the first time that you have seen a friend die? You should be thankful to him for saving your life. He truly died as a shinobi. Haku said. Died as a shinobi? Are you saying that he should proud about the way he died? Naruto snarled. A very potent and evil chakra began to leak out of Naruto. Haku looked at it with some concern. What was a leak suddenly exploded into an outpour of chakra. While the normal color of chakra was blue, this chakra was red. It surrounded Naruto and covered him like a shield. What is this chakra? It's so vile and full of bloodlust. I can barely stand it. Haku thought. That's when Naruto raised his head and looked right at Haku. The once kind blue eyes were now red and filled with malice. He put Sasuke down and took a few steps forward. Haku watched as his features changed into something more animalistic. 
he released an inhuman roar which made his chakra skyrocket. Within the mist, the two jonin were now concerned about the vile chakra that they were feeling. Kakashi knew that chakra while Zabuza was confused. Is this Kakashi's doing? No, not even he could put this much chakra. What the hell is going on? Zabuza thought. Did the seal break? No, it looks like it has just loosened enough for him to use its chakra. Still, what could have caused it? I need to finish this now and get over there. Kakashi thought. Back with the two, Naruto was pouring out more and more of the vile chakra. He glared at Haku with nothing but hate. We might not have been friends but he had an ambition. Now, he can't complete it and you think that he should be proud by the way he died. Well then, I hope that you feel the same way because when I get through with you, you'll be joining him. Get ready to die. Naruto roared and charged at Haku with the intent to kill. That will be it for this video if you want more, comment down below like, subscribe and see you guys later.